Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this channel. So, yeah, new setup. I apologize this next week probably uh, we will have the setup and I really hate the setup because uh, the microphone is right here so in order to hear the best kind of sound I need to be looking this way but unfortunately I don't have space for my camera so my camera is over there now I've already ordered like a little gizmo thing or just like something that's gonna hold the hammer camera right about here uh, it's gonna take a couple of days to arrive so I apologize if I don't see you directly as much as I usually do uh, because I need to focus of course on the content so today we're gonna do a mini series and we're gonna start with a mini series this is not gonna be like six or seven or eight videos it's probably just gonna be one two maybe three videos depending how how we do it how we advance and I want to show you how we could model one of this uh, chainmail coils uh, in ZBrush, start in ZBrush and then bring it into Substance because I want to show you, I want to talk about uh, opacity, transparency and how we can create a very nice game asset for this sort of effect. So, as some of you already know, trying to do a chainmail in real life and involves the uh, interlinking of all of the different links of all of the different uh, like chain circles until you create the whole suit right in games it would be impossible to have uh, like all of that topology all of the geometry some people have tried it and, and they can get some very nice results but it's not going to be game efficient so in games we usually we usually use a texture that it has transparency so that you can see through the little holes now um, I'm going to show you real quick how to do the model here inside of uh, of Seabrush. Today's video is going to be that one. I'm going to I want to show you exactly like all of the steps that we're going to be doing. And I'm starting with a in the light box on the tool section or in the project section. I'm no, sorry, in the tool section, we have this uh, mail. No, it's not the tool. Sorry, it was the this one. We have this mail base mesh. So I have this one right here. Now I'm going to duplicate this guy. And the reason I want to duplicate it is because. Um, it has a lot of geometry, so I am gonna dynamesh this to like a 300 resolution, so that we have like a a low res version, probably not 300. Oh, there we go. Is 300 good enough? No, probably like 500. And what this will do is we're gonna be using a little bit of dynamics. We're gonna be using the the cloth simulation that's new here inside of ZBrush. Well, it's not new; it's been around for a short amount of time. I think it was this year or last year when they released it. So as you can see, I'm train dynamicing the the face of the character. I'm just leaving the brows in. And I'm gonna train dynamic the well, not the ears because I do want the volume of the ears, but I'm just gonna fill them in with a little bit more volume so that the uh, dynamic section has a little bit of an easier time understanding how the how the forms um, move around. So now the only thing I need to do, give me just one second. There we go. The only thing I need to do is I need to create the coif shape. So I'm going to mask this out. Like I'm going to mask all the parts where I want this uh, coif to be. Like all the way to the shoulders, probably. There we go. I'm going to leave an open space here on the on the face and the neck. It's usually hanging a little bit low like this. And then let's go in like this. Something like this, I think, is good. Kind of like a superhero, uh, superhero element, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extract this thing from the from the mannequin, and I'm gonna do that by using the extract function function. But I'm gonna bring the thickness all the way down to zero, so that when we extract this thing, I'm gonna hit accept. I don't, I don't really I don't really care about the topology right now. When we hit accept, we're gonna get this thing right here. So it's a new sub tool, as you can see, that extracted the mask that we have. The only problem, of course, is that the topology is horrible. So here's where our trusty uh, Siri measure comes into place. So geometry, Siri measure, and I'm just going to Siri mesh just like this. Let's, let's see what we get. Uh, we should be getting a fairly clean uh, element. I, I don't think we're going to get anything like super, super weird. There we go. That's good, but it's a little bit too dense for what I want because um, I actually might be just fine. Let's give it a shot here. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is now that we have already used this base mesh, we don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to delete it. And as you can see, we have the original mesh, mesh down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this guy right here, which is my uh, main uh, coif. Let's isolate it for a second. And I'm going to use C modeler to Q mesh the whole thing. So on the, on the face, I'm just going to Q mesh the whole thing. Where is it? Q mesh. There we go. I'm going to say polygroup all. And this is going to give it a little bit of thickness. 
And the only reason why I want this to give them a little bit of thickness is because now I want to select this new edge or thing that we get and delete everything else. It's pretty much like doing an extrusion so that the coif is not exactly on top of the character, but rather uh, like slightly, slightly out. Where is it though? Oh, here. There we go. So now you can see it's slightly on top of the character and this is going to allow the dynamic simulation to run a little bit better. So now the only thing I need to do is I am going to uh, go to the coif right here. I'm going to go to dynamics and I'm going to say collision volume. Now I'm going to bring the inflate down to zero because I don't want the collision volume to be like bigger than the actual object. So dynamics and I'm going to say a collision volume recalculate. Now if I were to go again to dynamics and then turn on gravity and I run the simulation, you can see that the coif is just like going through the character right? it's not going it, it's kind of like um it, it's uh, flowing through the character right so it is obeying like pretty much the the resolution you can see that the resolution of the of the dynamics it's and it's pretty good it's a little bit too intense so one thing you can i think uh if i remember correctly we can just like give it a little bit not not that much or we can just go into dynamics and um i'm gonna increase the firmness a little bit it's like a four Okay, that's not bad. I mean, it's getting closer to what I want. It's just, I, I pretty much just want a couple of wrinkles here and there. And if the simulation is not giving you exactly what you want, remember that we also have, uh, what? Oh, there we go. Remember that we also have the, um, the move brushes. So B, and we're going to go to cloth move. And uh, I am going to make this a little bit bigger. And then just start moving this thing up. That's not gonna be perfect, and that's that's the thing with simulations. They're they're never like like truly perfect, uh, but they're gonna give us a, a nice result. And, and the main thing I want is I want the shape to kind of like go around the character. In this case, I want to like actually push the ears a little bit, as you can see there. Uh, let me turn off the character here. You can see how we're gonna get a little bit of volume representing where the where the ears would be. I would imagine that the weight of the chain mills would actually like push against the ears a little bit. So it's fine if it's not completely perfect. And the one that I really like, there's this uh, cloth uh, notch button that we're gonna be able to use to to create a couple of like wrinkles and stuff. See those wrinkles? Now, of course, chain mill does not create like some big wrinkles, but I do wanna have a little bit of, you know, just, just a little bit of variation. And remember, this is still geometry, so at any point in time, you can just like start uh, creating a little bit of uh, sculpting here to create a nice form. So I just want this thing to to look like it's, uh, like the chain mill is, is, is flowing down and it's uh, bulking and, and creating some volumes where, where it's supposed to be doing it. So just still a little bit of visual interest. Now, the unfortunate part about the method that we're going to be using is that this method does not allow for a thickness, right? Because uh, even though usually the, the chain mill has thickness, we're not going to be able to include it. That would bring the poly count way, way, way too high. And, and that's not what we what we want. So I'm going to keep it like this. Let's turn this guy off. And let now let's just uh, smooth this thing just a little bit. I don't want any like weird normal elements here. Everything's gonna look very soft, very nice later on in, in Maya. We're gonna bring this into Maya. And and we have enough like uh, interesting silhouettes for, for this sort of like coif that uh, things are gonna be looking good. Now, I'm gonna show you one trick. And this trick, I actually didn't invent it, of course. Most of the tricks that I show you, some of them I do invent or, or find a way to to optimize certain workflows or not. And others you just learn, right, from, from uh, the internet from tutorials from interviews from uh, any making offs like there's a lot of information out there and that's that's on you to to go for that information and, and get the best possible uh lessons so i'm gonna export this guy so i'm gonna hit export uh let's go to our project so next to live assets and this is gonna be let's call this chain mail coif there we go here and we're just gonna call this uh, coif. Cool. Now let's open Maya. And here's the the trick. Uh, the first time I saw this trick was in The Witcher Three, and I think they they made a fantastic job with that. Usually, and, and that's again the problem with. Um, um, with uh, chainmail is you would usually have just planes with that opacity texture and uh, and 
that that was it. Uh, it's like this is the this is the traditional way to do chainmail, as you can see here, where the chainmail just ends on a, on a row of links. Uh, but on The Witcher, one thing that they did to kind of hide the fact that this was just a texture, see how they created this very nice leather like uh, borders for the whole thing? And you can see them on all of the leather armors or most of the leather armors. You're going to see how the chainmail transitions from chainmail into actual um, uh, this leather sort of stuff. So very, very, I would say very... Uh, logical and a very creative solution for the for the for the issue because again if you take a look at the realistic way that chainmail works let me go back uh, it usually has no borders like this guy added the border here on the on the mouthpiece but usually the coifs and everything they would just like flow maybe like a different color of rings to indicate where it ends but you would never get like this sort of like uh like leather uh, border, but it makes it look very good. And it also helps us hide the fact that this is a flat piece of uh, geometry. So I'm going to go here. Let's set the project real quick. And uh, I'm going to go into next to live. Just set it, file, import. And we're, of course, going to import from our assets folder and our new coil, this guy right here. Now, the cool thing is this is actually uh, very close to, uh, or if not uh, exactly on the um, on the realistic scale. Now it's a little bit dense, as you can see, it's 18,000 triangles. I'm gonna keep it like this just because it's, um, it makes sense, uh, but you don't need to. If you wanna, if you wanna minimize it a little bit more, that's fine. I think this is, it's not bad, uh, but it is definitely a little bit high. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the last row here and I'm actually gonna delete it because there were some very spiky uh, edges there that I don't really need. And uh, as you can see, for some reason, sometimes Seaverse does this, it will split things, especially if they were like polygroups and something. No big deal, just combine, and then you're gonna go into uh, modeling, mesh, edit mesh, you're gonna hit merge. And as long as you set the threshold to 0 0.001, 0 0.001, it will only merge vertices that are right on top of each other. And as you can see here, it, it just like fixes the whole thing. So there we go. Now for the border, she's a very cool trick. You're gonna select this edge right here, and then you're gonna say mesh, sorry, uh, modify, convert, and I'm gonna say polygon edges to curve. And this will create a curve right there. See, very cool. So this curve, as you can see, it's a reconstruction of those edge loops that we have. And it's, it's following perfectly. It's following the solid perfectly. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. I'm gonna say mesh, sorry, uh, modify, convert, and I'm going to say um, polygon edge to curve. So now we have two curves that follow the exact borders of our uh, coif, which is very cool, right? Now we're going to grab both of them and we're going to use one of the new tools inside of Maya 2022, which is the uh, create a sweep mesh. And the sweep mesh, what it will do is it will create, as you can see, a very nice border all around those curves. And I mean, I can't make it easier for you guys. This is just, it is just out of the box. It's working. As long as you know where the tools are, you're going to get a great result. Now, I definitely going to move these things down to like a four sides uh, to make them uh, s uh, smaller. I might be even be tempted to go into the this rectangle option, which is going to give me uh, like this. Yeah, I think that that nice bevel is going to be really cool. And now we're just going to push the width or not actually push the uh, the height maybe a little bit of the width and a little bit of the height. Because here, what I want this to, I want this uh, shape to be like hugging the surface in a very nice way. I think this looks good. I think it's a little bit uh, big. So let's play around with the with the corner radius. And I'm gonna see if we can, yeah, we can rotate the profile here, see? So that we can match the, the actual direction of the of the thing. Now let's make it thinner, there we go. Let's move the corner radius again. Uh, corner segments, it's fine. And uh, yeah, I might, I might want to add a little bit more uh, height here just to make it a little bit denser there. And that's it. <laughs> that's it, guys. We have <laughs> we have what we would need. We, we have the, the coil and we have this little nice border which is very organic. Again, the, the high poly or this high poly, it's a little bit high. So let me show you how I would make this a little bit more into a game rest. I would go back to ZBrush. I would clone this tool into a new one. And I would go again into geometry, see remeasure, but I would select this option half so that we go from this options to half whatever we have. So I'm gonna see remesh and let me do once more. 
and maybe once more. Yeah, there we go. So now we have uh, only 985 points, which is really good. And we can, of course, bake a normal map into this so that we get the nice little curvatures. So I'm going to export this. Let's call this coif underscore low. I'm going to go back here. Now this is going to be coif high because we have a, a high resolution. And I'm even tempted to uh, go into mesh and give it a, a smooth just to have like a very, very smooth uh, mesh for the, for the high poly. I'm just gonna say file, import, and import the, the low. Now, the only thing I need, I'm a little bit worried about is the fact that the low and this guy might not be perfectly aligned. So I don't wanna see any little holes or anything, uh, but no, it, it seems to be, it seems to be working fine. Let's, let's take a look with this one as well. So this three guys. And as long as there's no like super obvious, like there's a little bit of a vertex there, easy fix. Just grab these two guys, bring it slightly back. Should be good. Let's give it a look every well. Oh, we have a little, another little spike here. Ah, in this case, for instance, these two guys, easier to just like merge to center. And I would imagine that we have something similar here. Yeah, so just merge to center and then just grab those two little points. And with my R key, just scale them in. Uh, there's a little bit of an overlap there, but not not super uh, like important. And that's it. So this guy, of course, we're gonna say mesh display, soften edge, and uh, and now we're just gonna do the UVs. I'm gonna do the UVs in this exact video. We're only 16 minutes in, so thank you, thank you for holding along, for following through. Uh, very simple exercise. Eh? And by the way, this thing can apply to anything. If you wanna do like a full chainmail armor, you got it. You got the tricks already. So uh, hopefully you're learning a lot of cool uh, elements from here. So I'm gonna use my trusty uh, UV technique. I'm gonna say UV, uh, I'm gonna say planar mapping. I'm gonna planar map this from camera, keep with, uh, hit away. It's like a, taking a picture, right? So I'm, I'm taking a a mapping from the camera. I'm keeping the image with height ratio and uh, and it's just this. Now the coif, this thing right here, the, the UV is super, super simple. It's kind of like a luchador uh, element. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna go UB editor, no, sorry, uh, 3D cut and so UB tool, and I'm just gonna cut it back here like this. Now, uh, yes, we are gonna have a a what's the word a a seam. So I'm gonna try to minimize the seam by cutting all the way down here. Uh, but since we have enough holes, if we were to unfold this, which is what we're gonna do next, there we go. Alt B is to change the color of the of the backdrop there. There we go. This is perfect. Now I do seem to have a, like something there that's weird uh one thing we can do is just grab this vertex those two guys and go into sew and just uh, sew them there we go and just get them in there and that's it we have the the main shape so i know that the that the texture is going to be mapping very very nicely especially on this front side which is the most important this top side and yes we're going to have seam on a seam on the back but it's uh, it's a little bit unavoidable. It's, it's not something that you can really change. Now we could add another like a leather uh, band going through the back to hide that seam, but that uh, it, it's not really that important. Uh, so that's that. Now for this two guys though, uh, very common question is how, wh what's the best way to uh, to unfold this sort of things, right? Well, we already know that a torus, if you grab it like a torus, we do a cut through the torus cut through the torus, and then we do a cut across so that we get a flat surface. It's the same thing. It's just a cylinder uh, with like a square profile. However, one thing that I do want to keep or try to keep is I want to I wanna keep s uh, small strands of uh, leather because if, we're, if I were to just grab one and cut, it's going to be a very, very long strand and we're going to have very low geometry. So this is one of those cases where I would definitely uh, cut more times than usual. For instance, oh, uh, well, f first things first, let's grab this thing, the history to get rid of the of the sweep mesh. And then a UV, 3D cut. There we go. So one across and here, same deal. And again, to, to keep this uh, a little bit better, I'm going to cut one on the top, one on the bottom, and then one on the sides here. And that's going to give me four uh, different like strands. And that's gonna allow me to scale them a little bit more in the UV and get more resolution. And I don't really care about those seams because leather, it's a lot easier to hide the uh, the leather texture with uh, with substance. Some of you already know the trick, which is the triplanar mapping, which I, of course, will be showing. Um, but some of you don't know it, so you'll learn something new on the next video. 
And uh, yeah, that's it. So now we just grab both objects. We go UV, UV editor, grab all of the objects here, and we unfold. And see how many like lines we have there? Pretty good, right? Uh, I think I forgot to uh, freeze transformations. So let's give it another shot and let's hit unfold. And there's a very cool option in the layout tab here on, on tools, sorry, modify layout, where you can actually select a vertical. And if we do that, we're gonna get all of the strands arranged in a vertical manner, which is also gonna help us with the, with the general textures. So now we're just gonna grab both of them, both objects, I mean. There we go. Oh, not the high poly, of course, just this guy. And uh, let's try to find the best possible way. So I know that I want as much resolution for this guy as possible. So I'm probably going to have to scale it down a little bit just so that it fits the square like this. And of course, the size of this guys are not matching the resolution. So as you can see, we have a very high resolution on the bands and a very low resolution on the coif. So that means that we're going to have to scale them down. Now, there is a way to do this uh, automatically. But since uh, I have a lot of extra space here, I'm going to try to utilize it in the best possible way. I'm going to rotate this guys actually 90 degrees. So we can get them here in the on the corner and see how we can actually scale them. So sometimes, I mean, textual resolution is very important, of course. You, you want to keep all of your uh, textures consistent. But if you can uh, get a little bit more resolution in certain areas, like here, and, and it's not going to like break or, or create like a super different uh, effect, and sometimes it's it's good to do it. Now here, for instance, I might be even tempted to, to rotate this guy a little bit, which is not going to give me a uniform effect. But since we have a lot of uh, space here, I can actually do it. And, uh, and the texture at the end of the day, we can rotate it in substance and we're still gonna get a very a very cool effect. So yeah, that's it, man, that's that's it, man. I usually don't say that word, uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, um, uh, we're, we're ready, that's that's all we need. Uh, our, our koi fist is ready and uh, the next step is gonna be the texturing. So tomorrow we're gonna be working on the, on the texturing and, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to create the opacity channels inside of Substance. So hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you learn a couple of new techniques and tricks. Um, make sure to tune in tomorrow to see the result, to see the final, uh, the final effect. And yeah, I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.